Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request from Team Pin. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it. PayPal, usually the best bet. Do have a Patreon and a Cash App for those interested. Links are down in the info box if you wish to. It could be any movie review, re review, topic, video game playthrough, reaction, tier list, ranking, whatever the case may be, I'll get to as soon as I can. And Tim Pin wanted me to review Doctor Strange from 2016. The reason I pause is because other than a few asides, like like Deadpool and Wolverine, I didn't mind. I'm on one or two others. This is one of the last MCU films I truly liked. Which is sad because I did not like the sequel to this movie. Multiverse of Madness. I thought they had just way too many problems with it. But this one I liked. I did not follow Doctor Strange in the comics. I think the most I saw Doctor, Doctor Strange was when there was this series called Secret Defenders. Where it would be like these random group of people like the Punisher and some other people like put together for this mission. And like Doctor Strange would like move them from place to place. I actually like to reread those. It's been a long time. But I think we call the Secret Defenders. And I know there was a movie, like a TV pilot or something they tried in like the 70s or something. And then Full Moon tried to do their own version called Dr. Mordred with Jeffrey Combs. But this is Dr. Strange and Benedict Cumberbatch stars. And I wasn't really sure because he was Khan in Star Trek, Star Trek Into Fartness, and I did not like that film at all. I'm like, why are you trying already to copy Star Trek to Wrath of Khan? What are you doing? But he did a good job here. He's kind of like if Tony Stark, Iron Man, you know, if Tony Stark, if he had Tony Stark with a bit of House from House MD, which I'm a big fan of that show. I love House. The last season, there's some iffy stuff to it, to be fair, but um, for the most part, I do like that show. I have a lot of it on DVD. I would say that might be my top ten favorite shows, House MD. Uh, I quite like that. But yeah, Benedict, I, I liked him in the movie. I thought he did a really good job. I like the rest of the cast. Chuito Ijefor, I did quite like him as Bordo. It's sad that he really hasn't had a whole lot to do in this whole MCU thing. I th he was a multiverse of madness. Like a different version of him. But we haven't seen Mordo from this movie since... Wow. For eight years at least we haven't seen him? Which is weird because the way it ends it seems like he's going to be this important character at least for this franchise and... The only time I remember him being referenced in the sequel that came out years after this was a different version of him. Uh, Tilda Swinton. I know there was a bit of controversy because in the comics that character was Asian. But here it's played by Tilda Swinton. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I didn't follow the comics. It's not like the Ancient One is someone I really knew jack shit about. I can understand if you're a hardcore fan of Doctor Strange and it bothers you, I understand. It's like when they did Ninja Turtles, the 2014 film, and it's like, William Fickner is Shredder. And I went, what the fuck? What? I'm sitting there going, I'm thinking of Shredder as a guy that knows martial arts and... William Fitner ain't going to be, <laughs> ain't going to pull that off. I'm like, what the hell? And I think of like the suit. I don't buy William Fitner in that. And But I mean, can it work? Sure. Michael Clark Duncan is great as Team Pen. And, you know, Team Pen you think of as this fat white guy. But the fact to be very much powerful. I think Vincent D'Onofrio does a wonderful job in Daredevil. 
But Michael Clark Duncan did a wonderful job as well. So I guess it just depends. I mean, I thought Tilda Swinton pulled it off. I liked her demeanor. So it didn't bother me. I can understand it again. I can understand people are bothered if you're hardcore in the comics, you're a fan of the character. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I knew shit about the comic. <laughs> All I know is what I see here, pretty much. And it's directed by Scott Derrickson, which I don't mind as a director. I don't love every film he did. I did not like Sinister. But I did like Deliver Us From Evil. I thought that was a very underrated film from him with Eric Bana. I did like The Black Phone. I did like his segment in VHS 85. I thought that was actually a really good segment. Like one of the best segments in the, the whole VHS franchise, honestly. And I thought he did a good job here. I like how, yes, you just say there's maybe tropes of the MCU. There's humor involved. There's, you know, the love interest. There's all there's some stuff here and there, but at least because it's the realm of magicians, the action scenes you could be a bit more creative in the choreography. You have some trippy visuals, whether it be. When the Ancient One presses Doctor Strange out of his body, and he's seeing all these weird dimensions, and his body's being broken apart, or all these hands come together, and they form Doctor Strange's face and shape. At least there's nice trippy visuals that make it a bit more unique compared to other Marvel films. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, I liked him. I... I thought he did a good job. I thought he had some nice, again, type of house MDs. Not cynicism in this, but maybe a tad that Tony Stark wise assness. But look, I also seemed like a guy that you could definitely depend on. And even as a guy that didn't know much about Doctor Strange, it still felt like he does seem like someone who would be a Doctor Strange. Who is this neurosurgeon who does this crazy thing where he saves this guy who has a bull in the head and he has these steely hands to be able to do it. One day he gets in a car crash. The car crash doesn't look the best in, in today's age. But it does what it needs to. Gets his hands screwed up. His hands are ruined. This life is all he knows so he doesn't know what to do. He hears about these people who somehow magically were healed so he goes and ultimately beats Bordo played by Chirito Ijefor I can never pronounce that guy's name but I do like him as an actor he was in this underrated film called Red Belt which not many people talk about but that's a pretty good one he was also in 2012 by, directed by Roland Emmerich which is a film I actually don't mind I think he's in the new Venom movie, Venom 3, which I didn't give a rat's ass about that movie. Unless it was a paid request, but... Because I thought the two, the first two Venom films sucked. <laughs> but, I think, I'm guessing he's the villain in that movie. But I do like him as an actor, so it was nice to see him here as a guy who... Is a good guy, like he's very much for the cause he's very much for the ancient one very what's the word i'm thinking of very i don't know if i want to say obedient is the word like he, he follows the rules and he meets these individuals and he of course he doesn't believe in it i don't believe in fantasies like chakras and stuff but when he's led to believe in these very trippy sequences that seems like you <laughs> had a bad case of lsd one thing leads to another and he starts after a bit of awkwardness starts training and is a quick learner of course now, I wish there was a bit more of showing him in the training. Because the best they show I did like, like the little fight he has with Mordo, 
where Doctor Strange is trying to do this thing where you have this kind of like spell thing with these kind of chain that he has. And he's trying to teach him how to fight. Like I said, I wish there was a bit more of that. I, I did think he's a character who has a photographic memory, but uh, I just want to see a bit more of that transition. I'm not saying I need a training montage, but just just a little bit more to see him rise up the levels, but you know, I didn't mind his scenes with the ancient one, Tilda Swinton. I thought Tilda did a good job. I didn't mind Benedict Wan, who is the keeper of all the books and the information and very strict, doesn't laugh, doesn't smile, which is a point because at one point he does later on and that's kind of the That's what, they have him so strict and not smiling because there's going to be a point later on where he laughs, of course. And pretty much you have this bad bad guy played by Mads Mikkelsen. And of course they want to get this object and this item. And bring up the big bad guy from the dark dimension, Dormammu. So it's not like the plot is anything that's going to raise your stirred up, so to speak. But, lighting the actors, and the way they they have the budget to deal with all this magic stuff, so there's some really creative moments with the idea of the mirror dimension, and when you're in that dimension, nothing in the real world is affected, but in this world, you could either survey... Or you do twist and turn all you want, and the real world is fine. But here, you can make buildings, whole cities turn in like a 180, or go upside down and swirl around. And that's where you get some really impressive visuals, which I liked about it. I mean, there's a whole chase scene where the bagger is able to control it, and Doctor Strange and Mordor have to bounce off these buildings, and there's a building... But then as his curve and now they're sliding down and hanging like like think of that scene from Inception where the whole city's turning. Now imagine much more complicated of turning and being twisted. It, it's very cool. Same with the other action sequences. Like when they're trying to get this item and Doctor Strange is trying to protect it and he's trying to understand how to use certain things. But the bad guys, are because the part of the dark arts, they're able to twist the room in a 360 and he's on the ground but now it's being twisted where he's ready to fall. He's trying to grab stuff so he doesn't fall all the way through. This is a bit where he's been hurt badly and he needs his ex-girlfriend to help him. So while she's trying to save his life, he astral projects himself and gets to a fight with Scott Atkins, who is in the film. So again, that's an idea that I haven't really seen done a whole lot. Like, you're being opera on the table, but then you have an astral projection fight with another person going back and forth. And it's funny, the idea of that an astral projection version of Scott Atkins is ready to kick you in the face. And... Yes, Scott Atkins, a lot of times he gets these big movies and he really doesn't have much of a part, which is funny. What was it? He was in... I'm trying to remember what else, what other big projects he's been in. Let me look at his filmography. Because I do like Scott Atkins, but he like has no dialogue in the film. He's part of Maz Mickelson's group. And yeah, he was in films like The Born Ultimatum. He was the... Remember X-Men Origins Wolverine when Deadpool has his mouth closed? When it's not his face, when it's the body doing all the martial arts, that's Scott Atkins. So that means Scott Atkins did most of the fight against Hugh Jabman in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Hell, The Expendables 2, he barely had anything to do. What was the other movie I was thinking of? God. Give me one second. I, I'm sorry, I know. Uh, it's going to bother me if I don't. 
It was a comedy, and it was a really shitty comedy, too. I probably already pat. Oh god, The Legend of Hercules, I forgot he was in that. What was the name of that movie? It's so awful, like... <laughs> So uh, bear with me on this, man. I know it's not the most exciting bit of business. Okay. Hell, I'll just go through it all. Why not? It's my review. Scott Atkins. He was in The Accidental Spy, which I forgot he was in that, as a bodyguard. Special Forces, I still haven't seen. The Medallion. Yeah, one of the lesser Jackie Chan films. He was a henchman. He was a footballer in the Pink Panther. Boyka and Undisputed 2, that's a good one. I like the Shepherd Border Patrol. I like the tournament, I haven't seen that in forever. Ninja was okay, I like Ninja Shadow of a Tear even more. Undisputed 3 I liked. Assassination Games I thought was shit. El Grindel wasn't a fan of. Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning wasn't big on. Zero Tolerance, I don't remember what the hell that is. Close range, I didn't mind. Retail, I didn't see. The Brother Grimsby, that's what I was thinking of. But here it's just called Grimsby. But yeah, it was called The Brothers Grimsby. It was with Sasha Baron Cohen. And Scott, yeah, that was an awful comedy with Scott Atkins. And he was completely... <laughs> yeah, I mean, even this, you could argue, he's not used a whole lot. I mean, he has a couple... He gets a couple cool moves in there. Like you say, he has no dialogue. He just a bit of fight with... With uh, Doctor Strange. And then that astral projection part. And then... When the lady gives him the paddles, he's able to... Kind of shock. Electrocute, I guess. Scott Atkins' soul. Kill his astral projection, I guess. Now, I do like the idea that he's a doctor, and so when he killed someone, it affects him. As he puts it, I became a doctor to save lives, not take them. I do like the back and forth he has with Mor uh, Mordo, where Mordo's like, well, this is you know, what it is. Okay, th there's no other way to do it. And then Doctor Strange goes, you like imagination. And Mortar goes, no, you like a spine. I like the way they played off each other. I like that kind of butting of heads and how Dr. Strange doesn't want to kill, but Mordo's like, killing is what needs to be done. Sometimes that's the way it needs to be done. And that butting of the heads, I think, should have been taken even more so with a sequel. Where they're not friends, but it's an uneasy alliance of differing viewpoints throughout whatever this but no one stated got America Chavez or Ricky Gervais whatever the hell the girl's name was who fucking sucked in Multiverse of Madness she sucked ass no one gave a fine fucking shit about her they still don't how many people remember who the hell that character was and gave a rat's ass like this one bit between these two arguing was more character bases of drama and different viewpoints and depth than a single frame of multiverse of madness. I did when the actresses happen. I like the creativity. The yes, the twist in the rooms that you also say like Inception. So I did a lot of these. You say it's like Inception, but they do dial up a bit more. Because it's more of an action film. Um, I do like the, the cape. That becomes Doctor Strange's weapon. I don't remember if they did anything with that in the sequel. And that's funny. I reviewed the sequel. So I've seen the sequel. That's, the only thing that I remember is like the worst parts. Like you step on this thing and... People can see your memories, and I'm like, is this really something you put out in the public, that you step on this thing, and the whole world sees your memories? What if it was like a, I don't know, what the memory was a sex? 
Will the whole crowd now see a sex scene of your memory on this thing? Or Bruce Campbell's pointless cameo. Or, and I like Bruce Campbell, but, you know, it was, there was nothing to it. Scarlet Witch being a capital bitch. Patrick Stewart getting a paycheck and getting killed for it. Mr. Fantastic turned into doodles in such a insulting way. Those heroes being so dumb going, the one guy that could stop you is this guy right here with his mouth. Don't do anything to that mouth, because you do something to that mouth, which is very important, and that mouth could fuck you up. So, <laughs> the smartest people became the dumbest people. <laughs> hey, here's Patrick Stewart. Time to die. The Star Witch is more powerful than you. <laughs> so, that's sad. The last two times you see Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier is a senile old man that might have killed most of the X-Men, and then he's murdered in Lodian. Or a dumbass that gets killed and gets his neck broken in Multiverse of Madness. Yay! <laughs> wow, that's depressing as hell. But again, I like the, the characters. I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I think he does a very strong performance. I thought the, the pace kept pretty quick. I didn't feel too bored with it. It didn't feel over long, and it wasn't like a two and a half hour, three hour movie. There is, yes, there is a. He does have this girlfriend, but it's like they knew that one going to play a whole lot into it, so they keep that on the down low, which I think was actually for the positive in this. So they mentioned it, and it's there, but I think they knew if. You know, I don't know. Yes, it would have been nice to see more, to have a bit more of a strength to that whole storyline, but at the same time, I think it would have gotten more in the way of more pressing matters. And I can understand putting that a little bit on the wayside. I, I, for, I think at the end of the day, for me, that was... If I had to pit the lesser two evils, the better benefit to do what they did here. Keep her a little bit on the... The lesser of the screen time. <coughs> and again, I like the the creativity they embedded into it. With again the the topsy turvy mirror dimension chase sequence, the the battle scenes where you're able to twist around the world and use these spells, or again the tape. Oh, that's what I was getting at. Was the tape used at all in Doctor Strange Two? As in, like the tape was this figure of its own that had a mind of its own. I'm trying to think. If it did, I don't remember it. But yeah, the, I thought the city chase was very unique for a Marvel film. The Ancient One Dies. I thought it was a, a nice scene where she has this moment lengthen out. Because, like, she knows this is her time, but she's, you know, a little bit scared of it as well, which makes her a bit, makes a bit understandable for the audience that she feels that way. A yeah, nice goodbye bit. I like the visuals of that they have to go to Hong Kong and things are already up Shit Creek. And he has what well, we find out is one of the Infinity Stones, and Doctor Strange is able to utilize it to send things back and turn back time granted anytime you do that there's always that question of okay if you're able to do this what's to stop you from doing this all the time now maybe they said in the movie where he can only do it for so much or if you do it too much then it'll elicit some other dimensions to open up, or like some kind of penalty for doing all the time. I can't remember if they say it. If there is no penalty, then yeah, it's like why don't you just do this all the time? Just oh, turn back time. Do 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 do. It's like Superman, a Superman the movie. If he did go back time to save Lois, and it doesn't, there's no penalties on doing that. Then why don't you do that all the time? 
was to stop you from doing it all the time. Like, like in the Infinity War, I'm going, well, what's... Well, I... Did he, uh... Yeah, why didn't he just... Oh, uh, because he saw all the futures and this is the only one to do it. Because I was going to say, why does he just... They had to do that because you'd be saying, why did he just turn back time? Okay, Chris Pratt screwed up. Have it be where, I don't know, he's off somewhere else or he's Dr. Strange knocks him out and then, so he doesn't screw things up and... Like, they do what everything the same, but then Dr. Strange knocks him out so that they pull off the the glove and everything's fine. Because, remember, in Infinity War, they almost pull off the glove. It's just Chris Pratt fucked up. But then you're thinking, well, why doesn't Dr. Strange just turn back time, knock out Chris Pratt, since he's the one that's going to screw things up, so he's not there to screw things up. And the stuff he did, it's not like it mattered a whole lot. Like, Dr. Strange can remember, okay, he did this, and I'll also do this too, or create a double. I don't know, I'm, I'm looking too much into it. I say, whenever you get a device that you could turn back time, unless you give it certain penalties, like, I can't do this all the time because it'll ruin, it'll screw up the, the Earth gravitational, for, whatever bullshit you want to come up with. It's all sci-fi, fantasy stuff anyway. But I did like the visuals, everything turning back, and how they're fighting the bad guys, and so when things are being turned back and things are being rebuilt, some bad guys get stuck in the wall. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. It was like a different way of doing the big battle at the end. Because we're so used to... Having the big old one-on-one -on -one fight and you know things exploding and stuff, but here it's like no, we you still have that, but then you have this interesting turn back time gimmick where people get trapped in this or they look and then something's pushed back and pushed into them because it's trying to be rebuilt. It made for a bit more of a again creative action scene, and then I like the bit that. Doctor Strange has to outwit the bad guy, not outfight him. So he puts him in this looped time thing, and no matter what the, the bad guy does, he could kill Doctor Strange a hundred times. He still comes back and goes, I have an offer. <laughs> Which I thought was a cool idea. I thought that was a very neat idea. And he's like, hey, leave my planet, get the hell out of here, don't come back. The idea being, if you do, I'll put you in a loop time thing again. <laughs> You'll be trapped there yet again. Which then begs the question, couldn't Doctor Strange do that to Thanos? And put him in a loop time thing? Or did he not have... Maybe he didn't have all this stuff that he needed and I'm talking about because he was captured at one point, to be fair. So maybe he didn't have the stuff he needed. Although he's a magician, a wizard, so there any way he could just get back to Earth from there? I don't know. I don't know how magic... Yeah, just, couldn't he just make a portal and go back to where he is? Like, can't he just make a portal and go back to Earth? I mean, they, they do it to, at the end of Endgame, to have hundreds and hundreds of people go in. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I got it all wrong. <laughs> I could very well be. But anyway, the film itself, I liked the character. I liked the lead actor's performance. Treat to Age of Four, I liked his character arc where he's very much for this group, for the Ancient One, but he realizes that the Ancient One was attached, been into a bit of the dark dimension, and Doctor Strange bending the rules. He's not for that. He doesn't like how the whole thing's tainted, so he leaves. Okay, maybe that could create some interesting bits of the character where he becomes a, a villain or anti hero, like how you want to 
play into it. And even at the end of the film, he takes someone's power away that they've been using. There's too many sorcerers. But that could be an interesting character, but then, again, you haven't done anything with him. With that version in like eight years, so... And then if whenever they do a third film, who knows if that character will even come into play. And what the way the MCU is, who knows. After the, how awful the second film was, I don't know if I would want to see a third one. Which is too bad, because I, I think Marvel, I don't think they know how to write characters. I don't think they, they know how to incorporate sincere entertainment. I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why Scott Derrickson left. Because he was supposed to do the second film. But creative differences. He left and then he went and did the Black Phone, which was a good movie. So, he would probably never admit it because he doesn't want the Marvel, Disney, watchdogs hounding him. Who knows, maybe it was just, hey, they were cool with me, I was cool with them, we just had differences, we left. And it was, it was cordial. It could very well be cordial. But at the same time, it could be like, yeah, it was cordial, but they wanted me to do stuff I didn't want to do. I didn't want to tell the story they wanted me to tell. So I left. And if that's the case, then I think he made the right decision. Because the sequel wasn't that good of a story. This I enjoyed a lot more. And it's a shame because... I think in Doctor Strange 2, they made Strange not really the star of his movie. That was more of a Scarlet Witch movie. And Doctor Strange was more like a pussy in that, honestly. He didn't do a whole lot. Here, it felt like it was a good starting point. But th again, then you get to the rest of the Marvel Universe and cinema and it just... <sighs> See, I'm not a guy that just started hating superhero films randomly I liked Ant-Man I liked this film and when the Wasp I was okay but then things started to change whether it be more of the try to be more woke whether it be the less compelling stories the very weak strips the weird interpretations of characters and what they think their journey should be. All sorts of stuff that could go on for another hour. Did this. But yeah, to me, this is one of the last uh, nice shining examples of Marvel before really. Before the shit. <laughs> before the shit hits the bed. Hits the fan, hits the walls, hits the ceiling, hits the floors, hits it anywhere and everywhere. Covers your face. Mr. Duty Man, PD. But yeah, Doctor Strange, I, I still liked the film. So with that said, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.